Hi folks, in the garden now, doing a bit of work and I've got some spares for the Reliant Regal, the Trotter van. Let's show you what I've got. Right, we're, we're in uh, the end of February now and uh, I'm feeling a lot better now, the weather's changed a little bit. I've still got this virus hanging around. It's been around for. Oi, shut up, Bison. It's been around for ages now, since November, really, or viruses of a sort, but that's another story. Let's show you what I've bought for the uh, Trotter van. As you know, we want to get that working now. <coughs> still got that chesty bit. Right, so as you know, I didn't have an ignition system for the Trotter van. Not the new engine, anyway. So I brought this pack off of eBay. It's from uh, AccuSpark, I think it is, and uh, it comes with the distributor, the HT leads, the coil, and also the plugs, and also fitted instructions. So we're gonna have a look at that in a second. But uh, as I say, this is a kit that of uh, a pre-bought kit. What you get is a Lucas 25D4 side cap distributor. So, as I say, this is all going to be running off of the uh, negative earth system. Normally these vans are positive earth, as you know, but I'm converting it over to negative earth, which isn't a problem. So that's the distributor with obviously the side uh, lead access there. We've got a set of leads that come with it. Uh, there you go, four leads in there for our four cylinder engine. We've got four spark plugs, which are... I don't actually know what make they are, they come in as AccuSpark, I don't know if you can see that at all. AC, 9C, whatever, whatever that means there. I don't know what they are. And also we get the uh, AccuSpark Sports 3 ohm non-ballast ignition coil. Uh, so, <clears throat> have a little look at this. I do like undoing shiny parts. <laughs> That's a pretty looking thing. There's our AccuSpark coil. Again, it's all for negative earth, this one. I'll be fitting these now. So we couldn't start the engine without these, so we had to have something. And uh, I didn't think I'd bother with buying second-hand bits, to be honest with you. Not when it comes to bits like this. I don't know what this distributor's gonna be like, but uh, for a complete kit, you take a chance. And I think there's plenty of people out there who've actually used this system. Uh, I've not heard any negative things about it to be honest with you, but uh, again, there's different ways you can go. Some people say, oh, you should have got a so-and-so distributor or the so-and-so call. I've got a kit, it's going to work, hopefully, so I'm not too worried about it. And the other thing is that, uh, as you know, this is a 750 engine on on my one. I've converted it, the old the old engine, which I've still got, by the way, is a 600 engine. But the 7, uh, 700 and 750 engines had this carburetor, which was, uh, I got this one off of Neil Huckle who's a very good part supplier for Reliant Regals. Second hand, did buy a new one. And uh, I've not even looked at this yet, so you're looking at it first time with me. It's second hand, as I say, but uh, I'm gonna get a service kit for this anyway. This is the, um, where is it? It's the Zenith. 301Z carburetor, if you can see that. As you can see there, that comes on the 750 engines. The SU carburetors, I think, were fitted to the 850cc engines. I could have put one on, but um, I might as well keep this original. And it's in pretty good nick, as you can see. It's all there, it looks nice and tidy. And uh, hopefully this should bolt straight onto the manifold which come with the 750cc engine. You can buy, as I say, a full service kit for these for about 34 pounds, so I will be getting one of them. So now I've got them bits, I've just got to get the service bit now for that. Uh, what else do I need? I've got to get a new starter motor. I don't need to get a new one, I will get a new one. I need a, a, an alternator. I need a radiator. I think someone said that you can buy, uh, put a mini radiator on. I may go down that road because it's a lot cheaper than the uh, aluminium uh, pre-made ones. Not that I've seen any for sale recently on eBay. And also I'm going to need a clutch as well. So those are the main things I'm going to need. I don't need the clutch to get the car going or get the engine running, but as I say, I will need a starter motor, so that's one thing I'm going to need. Over the next coming week or two or whatever, I'm going to be buying these bits in. 
and uh, hopefully, as I say, we'll get the engine running. I'll put it in the chassis and make sure everything runs up okay. I've still got things to do, like the prop shaft and the uh, fuel lines to run in. So that's still got to be done. To, the brakes have all got to be put back in. Uh, I might have to take them out again because it's been living outside the chassis, as you probably know, under a sheet. But uh, I will have to take all them off again, the drums, and just make sure everything's okay there. But I've also got work to do around the house as well. As you know, my daughter Tracy's uh, going to be moving to Cyprus for three years. So we've got them living with us for the next week or two now. And then they're off for three years. So we're not going to be seeing our uh, other three grandchildren. Definitely not on a regular basis like we do now anyway. So that's why I'm spending a lot of time with the family at the moment. And uh, I'm also, I noticed that when we was out over the last few months, well, since November basically, the We've had high winds, and I noticed the garden fence at the back of uh, my property was sort of swaying in the wind, like that sort of thing. So uh, I remember we had that being installed about 2005, I think that was installed. So how long has that lasted? 2005, That's lasted 14 years. And I, let's take you over and show you, but I've got 12 posts to change. And I'm not actually changing the big wooden posts because they're fixed to the fence on the system we got here. But I'm, I'm buying the, what they call the uh, concrete spur posts which uh, go behind them and they can provide support for the posts. Let's show you what I've been doing so far. Well, as you can probably see, this one along here, this is, uh, this totally went woof, 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 like that. And quite a lot of these ones are actually broken off. So I've had to put these concrete spur posts in down here. Let me show you. Looking down here, what you've got basically is the actual post itself, the concrete, uh, the, the wooden post is actually right away at ground level. When they put them in the ground, they had a big cement block in the ground and they just I say the post was in the middle of it, but that's right away over the last sort of 14 years. And I've had to chop all that out. As you can see there, the big concrete post, which is now sitting over there, which is a very hard job to do. And uh, drop this in. This goes down to the length of where the post used to go, down this concrete spur. And uh, what you've got is three fixing holes through here, which when this goes off, this is a uh, sand and cement mix down there. And uh, then I can pull the fence up straight and then bolt straight through these posts uh, with some studding and that will then give me the support back without the need to take out all these support posts. And as you can probably see along there, we've got one, two, three, four, five along now, which I've got to change. Coming along there, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine there. Go away, Bison, Barney. <clears throat> Come away, go on. Big dog, go right under your feet. And then coming along here as well, so that fence goes right the way along here. There's another three, I don't know if you can see, it just kinks back in the middle there. Back there, there's one, two, there's three more to do along there. So they get a lot of wind coming along up, up the road there, obviously. So uh, that's what I'm having to do here. And it's quite a long fence, as you know. There's so much more work to do in the garden here, as you know. All this has got to be gutted away in the future. I haven't got around to doing it yet. But uh, that's something which will be coming in the near future well I'll say that <laughs> this needs a digger in here really to sort of level all this off this may not happen this year but I'm just maintaining for the moment getting this fence back up straight again and making them supports I'll probably do one of these a day that's quite a lot of work uh, to get them dug out like that with all I've got is that metal rod there that little metal pole there which I'm hammering down with and uh, I'll do one a day so work here for example and that means by the end of the week I should have four or five of these posts in they'll be setting over time. Bison, come out of there. Coming out. There's Bison. Those of you who watched the last part six of my shed video, someone did ask in the comment section, Bison, look. Bison, sit, sit. Someone did ask if Bison was still about. Well, as you can probably see, he is still about. And that was five or six years ago, as well as Barney. Come on, Barney. And a lot of you want to know about the old lawnmowers. Well, we've still got loads of them in the uh, lock up here, or the shed here, for Gary. These are mostly my lawnmowers, but I didn't get a chance to really do anything with them last year. But uh, hopefully we'll get a chance this year. So that's in, as you can see. Nice and solid. That is straight, actually. I'll put the uh, spirit level on that. And just have to tamp that down all the way around. And leave that for a couple of days, two or three days. And uh, that'll all go rock hard. I don't want to bolt it now because obviously the cement's not set. So uh, you've got to leave this to set now. And once it's set, then you can bring the fence to it and then bolt it through there with some studding or something, some uh, M8 studding or whatever, nuts and bolts either side, and that pull that straight in then. So there you go. 
Lots of stuff to do around the house as well. We're also decorating the dining room at the moment, aren't we, Bison? But we're not going to do that, obviously, until Tracy moves out and obviously other stuff we've got to do as well. So I've got loads of stuff to do there. I've got retro hacks now, which you know has overtaken my retro restore channel. So uh, I'm very pleased with that. But uh, obviously keeping two channels going is quite a challenge when we've got all these other things going on as well. So if the videos don't come thick and fast, please bear with me, as I say, because I've got all these other jobs I've got to finish now. That's going to take me a few days to get that up and fix that fence and all that. It's a lot of hard work in that. I've also got my Retro Hacks channel, as you know, which I've got to sort of keep one video coming out every Wednesday. So I've got to restore something every week. And also my new little model cars, as you know, they're going down very well at the moment, the model cars. So a lot of people are liking them videos, and so I'm not too sure on the next one I'm going to do. I've got the people asking me for the transit police van they want to do. They want the, the bus doing. Uh, and I've got a couple of other oldie ones as well, which are going to need refurbishment as well. Anyway, keep your eyes out for them. They come as and when. I'm trying to get one out a week or whatever. Uh, so, as you know, I've had to pull back on me T-shirt channel now. I'm just leaving all the videos up there. And for those of you who did ask, because a lot of people think, because I ain't doing no more videos on T-shirt printing, all the videos are still learning tools, and they're still up there for people to watch and learn. And anyone who still buys my training DVDs for my T-shirt or mug printing business, yes, I still will provide the email support. Anyway, I'm going to go now, because I'm going to have a cup of tea and... Uh, I've got to find something to restore this week for retro hacks. Oh, one other thing as well, what I forgot to mention as well. Uh, Mix, Mix Mowers, uh, new channel, which has not been going very long. I think he's got about 88 subscribers at the moment. He's really putting out some good content and he's showing you as is. In other words, you don't flannel things up like me. If something goes wrong, it goes wrong. Uh, and he's got his little son Riley there helping him as well. Uh, like, it's always good to have kids around. I, f I love kids learning stuff, and they're very inquisitive when they're seeing stuff out, rather than sitting in front of a PlayStation or uh, a, an iPad all the time. It's good to see kids out having a little uh, inquisitive nature into what their old man's doing, for example. So anyway, yeah, check out Mix Mowers, and uh, give him a sub as well. He's putting out some good regular videos, as I said to you, and he's like me and you. He, he started doing this as a bit of fun and a bit of hobby sort of thing. It keeps him going, he's ticking along, and he's doing quite well doing it as well. So as long as you keep putting stuff out and keep doing something, you're gonna get a result. So if it don't all go so well the first time you fix a lawnmower, get another one, get another one. And as you say, he's, he's putting out regular videos, so he's doing it. And that can only progress further down the line, you get further and further down the line and then you get known as someone who repairs mowers and then people come to you then rather than you have to go out and sort of find find these things you'll find stuff comes to you anyway that's me rambling again <clears throat> all right bison who's that then come here come on oh bison hey he's a good boy ain't ya the old blinking rut wire this is the burglar alarm system i've got a new system going in as well as you say an eight camera system uh, around the house so i won't be showing that but that's what's going in anyway all right come and sit down now all right then I'm going to go buy some, I'm going to have a cup of tea. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, bye for now.